when you're doing a period movie, you have to do it from every single layer because you never know when something is going to happen on set. It's not a still image. We've talked about a lot of movies that we almost made since Loving. Um, I was particularly excited about this one because the costumes are quite fun to do and period costuming is really fun. And um, yeah, I was excited about doing it. And so I kept waiting for it to come together. To hand tool and hand make all of the biker vests. You know, I think had it been a movie with like quadruple the budget and more people, we would have sort of half manufactured them. And I think it wouldn't have looked as real and realistic. It was all, it was hand done by some elves. <laughs> well, my first call was my age or dire, for sure. I knew everything needed to look um, old and worn in and dusty and dirty. And yeah, that was one of my first calls. So when you see it in live person, However old and dirty it looks, it's going to look 30% less old and dirty when you see it in camera and you see it on the big screen because it's just, it's just what happens. Um, something happens in the process of filming and just it's farther away, um, lighting, all the other things happening. So you have to go further than you think. And knowing that is kind of half the battle as far as, you know, when you're working with an age or dyer and when you're working with everybody around you, and I know. If you asked any of my crew, they'd probably say, she wants more dirt, because I do. I always want more dirt, because it always looks like less in camera. The women's fashion's super fun and really interesting. And uh, every woman kind of had their own way into the biker fashion and into the biker world, you know? So some were, um, I'm just gonna, borrow a leather jacket and, and, a, and a cut, which is, you know, the vest and um, over my regular everyday, you know, peg pant, mock turtle, little sweater. Um, and others were um, kind of more leaned into being part of um, a gang and into it. And I think they went a little bit harder and they would you know, make their own hat. For example, um, one of our characters has like a, a name hat um, and it's kind of the in, in the fashion of police hats. And that was something, it's a, it's a biker hat, but it is inspired by police hats, which is, the, the irony is like all over the place. Historically, there is actually... Um, the repurposing of uniforms, whether it's a cop uniform or a military uniform, you know, we have so much fashion that takes from the uniform and repurposes it. And the biker gangs were doing that. They were taking the motorcycle jacket that was a cop jacket and they were repurposing it. And um, same with the cop caps, the helmet, the the sort of visor caps, um, you know, those became biker caps. And so it's, 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 it's taking an institution or a uniform and repurposing it and putting your own spin on it. And at the same time, kind of saying, fuck you to that institution. Kathy has maintained who she is and not changed as much as you'd maybe think. And that's sort of the interesting sort of twist of her character, that she she has this strong inner North Star about her that doesn't change that much when she sort of enters this world. And so we did that with her wardrobe. You know, we, we didn't have her make some big, huge leap um, over the years. You know, she's one of those characters that she knows who she is. She knew who she was then. She knows who she is throughout. I mean, there was both the individuality of the group, you know, of each person in the group and the, the togetherness of the group. You know, of course, the logo and the, you know, the rockers and the back of the uh, vests are part of that. Um, part of it is just, you know, we took every single piece of denim that was in the movie and we over dyed it the same hue. So... That's what Adrian Dyer Troy did. You know, he sort of took all 
all of the denim, whether we built it, which we did for Benny's, or we bought it, which we, you know, or we rented it, you know, depending on wherever it came from, we over dyed it. And um, that marries it together so it feels like it's coming from the same world. It's a subtle thing that, you know, hopefully you'll never notice. It'll hopefully all look individual, but it kind of puts it all, you know, in the same world. Because a lot of denim, when you do see it, it, it can read quite 80s, quite stonewashed, even if it's, you know, broken in. And we didn't want anything to read out of our world and out of our time period. Emery, he plays Cockroach, wore the, the black and white striped sweater. I think, you know, these were, there was this, uh, motorcycle sweaters were a clothing item that people wore a lot back in the day. They had patches, they were, you know, double thick wool, super, super thick, and they were protective. So it was an alternative to a leather jacket kind of a thing. And so it actually existed a little bit before our time period, but, you know, could people would have worn them still. And um, we, we, I, I got a good feeling based on some of the reference material that black and white was kind of a good way to go with him because he always wore white pants in, in the, in the pictures and um, some kind of dark colored top. And so, and it was black and white photography. So I sort of went with the fact that he should be, you know, two-toned in this way. And that was his sort of defining way. And so his, you know, his vest, his cut is black, his sweater is black and white, his pants are white or black. I just kind of made it, made it a character element to separate him from the others. The way Jeff kind of intuited this character was that Benny really, you know, I think his, like, the most defining thing about him is that he doesn't care about decorating himself, about, you know, wanting to be, um, he's not, he's not curating himself the way a lot of the other biker guys do. And so there, there's kind of a nonchalance about him, like, it and that was important to me that he wasn't overly done, if you will. Like he didn't have as many gack and elements to his vest, and he didn't wear jewelry, and he didn't. Uh, he was as sort of stripped down and simple as they get in this world, and that was important to me because it was you know every time we'd put a little more on or a little more at something. It just, like, didn't feel like Benny. It didn't feel like the, the, he had motivation behind it, you know? He was, he's an anti, anti-everything anti sort of character. I'm so glad we're going to talk about these vests because this is insane when you hear what had to be done. Every single patch has to be cleared for clearances, for legal reasons, so we had to make them all. And graphic, like, we had to first design them, then get them made, then age them, then sew them on, then age it again. Every single one. So even the, these, we had multiples made. That I knew that I had a lot of leather, both boots and, and jackets to distress, to make them look worn in. And it, it takes so many hours and so much time. And we don't, we only have, we only had two months of prep on this movie, which was very quick. And we didn't have time to do it all. So we rented or bought vintage all of our leather. I did not have anything new in the whole movie. So I didn't, I didn't want to, except there's one. And you, if somebody can try to figure out, one of my lead characters has a brand new, bought off the internet, Amazon, leather jacket. I won't say which one it is, but we made it to look old. Wonder if people can tell. <laughs> this is where we got the mud color. Well, we, we got the mud color everywhere in all of our scenes and then recreated the paint uh, to be the color of the mud. Um, and yeah, that's why it, lo- you know, in general, the idea is always that our bike riders were covered in whether it was just full just road dust or mud, that's the reason for the dirt, you know? I mean, the, these guys are scrambling and racing, and so 
it was it made it makes sense this is a vintage piece this is a vintage piece that we painted this red stripe on and just put the button on yeah painted the numbers yeah this is johnny's jacket um there's a company my friend he helped me out on loving as well he has a company called um runabout it's menswear it's you know inspired by the this time period made new this is one of his jackets um we tweaked it a little bit and created this one this is kind of cool this is a real bike chain from harley davidson we bought and made a belt for benny <laughs> it is actually heavy you know we said to austin i said you know i can make this in plastic to look like this but not be as heavy and he was like no 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 it's cool i want it to be heavy it'll feel good and then we've got kathy's biker shirt with her chain added to the bottom you know these are one of the elements she gets obviously as her character progresses she doesn't change that much she would still wear the same Sweater probably underneath. Her her color palette gets a little bit darker and a little bit simpler because she starts out in the movie. She's in the this when she meets Benny in the. This is from scene. This will be scene five. Exactly, exactly. And he and I spent a lot of time up in Aqua Dulce, it's outside of L.A. It's north, at a buddy of mine's place. Um, I should say it's Shelley Ward's place. So <laughs> everybody that's watching this will know who Shelley Ward is if they're in the film business. And uh, we used his place, and I, I started Austin on a very small bike, big old Austin on this little bike. And then we went to the next bigger bike, and I actually bought a bike that was small for him to ride. And we got, he got pretty comfortable in that. And we started riding around out in the canyon country, um, just going on long rides and a lot of exercises. I did a lot of exercises with him, starting, stopping, turning. And it, was, it really paid off in the end. That, all that time that I spent with Austin for I don't even know the time period. It was, it was chopped up in a big time period, but it was great. It was really good for Austin. It was before Elvis had come out, so Austin wasn't, wasn't noticed out in the world, you know? Right, right. And um, it was good stuff. It was really good stuff. He and I, we got along, he's, a, he's the sweetest guy in the whole world. Normally, the role of the, one of the stunt coordinators would not be to source the motorcycles, but since I personally own a lot of these motorcycles, my best friend, his name's Oliver Peck, he owns a lot of motorcycles. I have a few other friends that have pretty big collections of these. We decided that I would gather up the motorcycles, um, make a deck of them so Jeff could look at them. The first conversation I had with Jeff, he, uh, I don't know his exact wording, but it was something effective. Milburn, I'm going to rely on you to keep me out of trouble. I don't want to be on a junket somewhere and somebody come up and ask me a question about some motorcycle that shouldn't have been in the show. And I said, don't worry, that's, that is what I, I'm here for. I will do that. Yeah, Springfield is 66. Yeah. So Jeff and I had talked about this a lot. Um, we have to be very careful with the motorcycles to see certain parts of them. There's a few motorcycles that actually have a few things that might overlap into later years. So the motorcycles that we have here, we're very careful not to have anything that was, we can, any parts that we can see that are from the 70s. There's, like I say, Harley Davidson, there's some parts on these motorcycles that go from 65 to 80 something, you, it's all the same stuff, or 66 or... I think there's 10 to 12 of these bikes that are mine, that I own personally. There's a good six or seven or eight that belong to my best friend, Oliver. Um, there's another nine or 10 that belong to a buddy of mine named Quigley. And then from there, because we have a deck of 45 motorcycles that are the ones that run the length of the show, this group of motorcycles that's behind me is pretty much the, the original vandals, what we're calling the OG vandals, which would be the characters, Benny's character, Johnny's character, Brucey's character, Wahoo's, Corky, those guys, and uh, probably Cowboy and stuff. All the actors that are riding, that are riding these motorcycles, I had to spend time with them. I spent the most time with Austin, okay. of course. But what happened as they started trickling into Cincinnati, I took in the, one, the ones that were really they had to ride either harder bikes or they really wanted to ride, like Toby Wallace. We've, we rehearsed a lot of group riding, like what we did, what we shot a few days ago here at the Springfield Rally, where we came in and the Johnny characters and everybody's, myself and there's 
almost 20 stunt guys all behind him and a couple of VG in the back. But um, yeah, we had to rehearse that over and over again because you can't just have people running each other and we had to rehearse the way we're going into it. The, the Kathy stuff, some of that, because there's an actress on the back, I'll, I, double, I double Austin in this movie. So the, some of that will be me and uh, a lot of it will be Austin in real life, but there'll be some of that, like the chase scene with Austin, it'll, it'll be me, but um, Austin is getting so comfortable on a motorcycle, we're gonna get as much footage as Austin as we can. Like Norman Reedus could ride a motorcycle, he's a motorcycle riding guy, but I did, I, before I came over here to interview with you, I just spent a couple hours with him yeah. on the motorcycle he's gonna ride, which is a handshift bike. Okay. And uh, the handshift bikes are the ones that even guys that ride motorcycles a lot, they're not really accustomed to riding these handshift bikes. Harley had a lot of handshift bikes. There's a lot of handshift bikes in the book, a lot of handshift bikes in that, in that time period. Austin Butler is, is on the motorcycle constantly in the movie, which is fine with me, and he loves it. Um, in fact, I had found a motorcycle I was going to buy recently and uh, on one of our trips to some barbecue place with everybody that we weren't supposed to be on. Um, Austin and I started talking and uh, my buddy Oliver was here visiting and he was heading over to a swap meet over in North Carolina and I made a deal with the guy to bring that bike and I uh, went and took some money out of my bank account, paid for that bike so Austin could have, and Austin's like, I want it, I want it. And so I got, I, I pretty much bought a bike for Austin, I'm not sure, yeah, he I wanted it. Um, <laughs> but um, his bike is really cool, it's, it's a 66. FLH a lot like the bike. The bike he's riding in the show is a 65, which that's that's one of my bikes. Um, Jeff, the director, and I, we we spent a lot of time deciding which who was riding what bike. And so Austin's bike is a 65 Panhead. It's a 65. It's not original paint because it's all beat up, but it is pretty cool. It has the cool little airplane on the fender. It has the lights in the back. It has a lot of little trinkety things, but it's a really good, reliable bike. And that's what one of the reasons why I picked it to be the main bike because it's. It's my personal bike, and I know it's reliable. This red bike that is Johnny's bike in the, Johnny's character, which is Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy's character, who is Johnny. I hope I'm not screwing this up for you too much. <laughs> um, this bike belongs to my buddy Oliver. It's a 55. Um, it was in, it was, it belonged to a man who was a mechanic at Six Flags Over Texas. I guess they have their own mechanics. And it was his bike, and it used to be on display at the 50s town in Six Flags, I guess. <laughs> The Brucey bike, we matched Brucey's bike that was in the book, which we ma matched as close as we could. I actually spent a lot of time trying to find that bike. I had friends looking for that specific style of bike. There was a sequence where Benny's bike gets run into um, by a car. I know that there's a shot where Benny's bike gets kicked over, which I don't think I'm going to be able to watch that when that really happens. <laughs> I can't believe my bike is going over on its side, but that's going to happen and we'll get through that. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. My girlfriend in high school had the photo of the guy riding over the bridge in her bedroom. Yes, of course. I, everybody know, everybody has ridden an old Harley Davidson you have to kick. They have seen that, at least the photo over the bridge. In 84, I got on my Honda that I had back then, and I put my leather jacket on, I greased my hair up, and at noon, in whatever date it was, in 1984, I rode down to the movie theater and I watched Streets of Fire and I thought to myself, that is the world that I want to exist in. Yeah. And I am sure that I have been existing in that world since then. And I immediately started figuring out how I was gonna get a real Harley Davidson. I know deep down that if this movie is done right and we don't, we don't put modern motorcycles and paint them to be old, we don't green screen things in. If Austin Butler is actually riding that 65 pan and, and you see Tom Hardy ride in on that thing and you see the details of this and the way that people are dressed, that it's going to bring it back to the, its core. It's, it, it, this is real. Like these are real motorcycles. This takes guys that, it, they're not easy to start. I have gone to great lengths for this to happen, for me to have my stunt riders riding on these bikes. I mean, it is. It's a battle because it's expensive to have 28 guys that are motorcycle only. Every one of these guys race motorcycles.